Welcome to Reading English Aloud. This is Reading English Aloud Practice, a super way to sail. New vocabulary words, nouns. Number one, epitome, epitome. Number two, asset, asset. Number three, luxury, luxury. Number four, divorce settlement, divorce settlement. Number five, alcohol, alcohol. Number one, epitome, perfect example of something. Number two, asset. High value thing or things owned by someone. Luxury, a state of great comfort or elegance. Number four, divorce settlement. Assets divided by a couple when a marriage ends. Number five, alcohol, wine, beer, spirits. New vocabulary words, verbs. Number one, rob, rob. Number two, refuse, refuse. Number three, hand over, hand over. Number four, impound, impound. Number five, to spare. To spare. Number one, rob. Take something by force. Number two, refuse. Not willing to do something. Number three, hand over. Pass responsibility to someone else. Number four, impound. Legally locked up. Number five, to spare. Left over. New vocabulary words. Adjectives. Number one, affluent. Affluent. Number two, immaculate. Immaculate. Number three, glamorous, glamorous. Number four, demanding, demanding. Number five, decadent, decadent. Number one, affluent, having a great deal of money. Number two, immaculate. Perfect, perfect, perfectly clean and tidy. Number three, glamorous, elegant, chic, beautiful. Number four, demanding, making others work hard, not easily satisfied. Number five, decadent, luxuriously self-indulgent. A super way to sail. Super yachts are the epitome of luxury, yet their origins were much more practical. Yachts were first built by the Dutch in the 14th century and used to chase pirates by the Dutch Navy. The word yacht means hunt in Dutch. Pirates are people who attack and rob ships at sea, so the yachts needed to be designed for speed. Rich Dutch merchants 
began using these fast boats to sail out to greet and celebrate returning merchant ships. The British king, Charles II, was given a yacht by the Dutch in 1660. He enjoyed sailing his yacht for pleasure, thus forever connecting yachts as pleasure crafts for affluent people. Yacht sizes range from daily yachts, weekend yachts, racing yachts, luxury sailing yachts, and super yachts. Super yachts are defined as a luxury yacht that is over 24 meters in length. They are owned by ultra high net worth individuals, UHNWI, with assets above $30 million and staffed by a professional crew. According to Forbes.com, a 100 meter super yacht with 50 crew members would cost around $275 million. Bonnie Muddle has worked as chief stewardess on a super yacht. She explains the yacht must always be prepared for any situation, whether there are guests on board or not. It must be kept in immaculate condition, which requires constant cleaning, scrubbing and polishing of both the interior and the exterior of the boat. Being a passenger on a super yacht is glamorous, but working on one is not. Sometimes, Bonnie describes, you only see famous ports such as France and Abu Dhabi from a small porthole. Plus, the guests can be very demanding. From keeping enough luxury alcohol in stock for decadent parties in the middle of the ocean to slathering full body makeup on celebrity guests all while making sure no one is suffering from seasickness and the weather is cooperating, the crew must provide six-star service with a smile. Super yachts also make the news headlines. One such yacht, the Luna, is a 115 meter long floating luxury villa with nine decks, a spa, a swimming pool, two heliports, and 10 VIP cabins. The owner, a Russian billionaire, refused to pay his ex-wife $646 million in a divorce settlement. A judge ordered him to hand over the yacht valued at $500 million to his ex-wife. The Luna now sits impounded in Dubai. A super yacht is a floating palace fit for any king or billionaire with a lot of money to spare. That's the end of the article, and these are my sources. Question number one. Where would you like to travel to on a cruise ship? Would you like to learn how to sail? Number three, can you swim? Why or why not? Number four, would you rather spend the day at the beach or shopping in a shopping mall? 
Number five, do you like fishing? Why or why not? Now just for fun, idioms about boats or idioms that have uh, the word boat in them. So be in the same boat. To share an experience or circumstance with someone. I also failed my exam, so we were both in the same boat. Fresh off the boat. Newly immigrated, so you've newly arrived uh, to another country. My father was fresh off the boat when he started his business in Canada. He couldn't even speak English yet. Push the boat out. Be lavish in one's spending or celebrations. Last night we decided to push the boat out and eat at that new expensive restaurant. It was so worth it. Whatever floats your boat. Whatever makes one happy. I wouldn't want to date him, but you can. Whatever floats your boat. It's a little bit, whatever floats your boat. It's also a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit negative. So your friend is doing something that you wouldn't necessarily do, and you're trying not to be judgmental, but it is a little bit judgmental. You know, mm, well, I don't really like the guy, but you can date him. Whatever floats your boat. A dream boat, a very attractive person. I've only known this to be used with um, for describing men. Did you meet the new manager? What a dream boat. And don't rock the boat. Don't say or do something that could be upsetting. Please don't rock the boat by talking about politics. Everyone is getting along so well. That's the end of the article, A Super Way to Sail. Thank you for reading English aloud with me. That was easy.